Hey guys, it's Liz and I'm here to share with you a project today. Um, I made these two projects for Leonie, who is my passion for paper here on YouTube. Her birthday was just a few days ago and I made these for her to, um, um, you know, wish her a happy birthday and also just to thank her. Um, she's been such a super sweet lady to me ever since the beginning. Um, she always has something sweet and the most thoughtful words to say. So I really appreciate all her comments and uh, I definitely appreciate her for watching my videos. I mean, she's awesome. Um, I'm a big fan of her work. Um, some of you may already know that because I'm always commenting on how beautiful her stuff is. So anyways, but I just, I love, love her stuff. But I decided to make a project for her, you know, just to wish her a happy birthday. And this is what I came up. And let's see, so I have a card and a small canvas. I'm going to show you the card first. This is the uh, birthday card that I made for Leonie. And I saw this cute, um, I guess the layout of the card, I saw it on Pinterest. It was actually a box card. But I just, you know, I just wanted to make a card. So I just, the layout of it, you know, the little pocket with the tag, I thought that was really cute. So let's see, for this card, I used the Prima Tea Time Papers, which I absolutely love. They are just so gorgeous. And I wanted to make these a little bit more um, shabby. It's a little shabby vintage look. So, And uh, Leonie loves flowers and butterflies, so I definitely added a lot of flowers to, um, well, you'll see on the canvas. I added a lot of flowers to the canvas. <laughs> but anyway, so I started off with just a white cardstock uh, base. And then I used uh, like a pink um, cardstock here. I layered over the top of the white. And what I did here, um, I did ink all the edges to give it a more vintage feel, if you could see that. It turned the pink. The pink was already um, more like a mauve color, but uh, uh, with the ink, with the vintage photo ink, it just made it more dusty, like a dusty pink color. And I really like the way that came out. And this back here is just a piece of the cardstock that I embossed. I ran it through my um, Big Shot with the dot embossing folder. And then I just ink the edges gradually, like it's darker on the edges and then it goes lighter. So it's really cute. I like that. And then this is the beautiful Tea Time paper right on top. And I inked all the edges on that with the vintage photo. And then I lightly went over it with some gesso, very, very lightly, just to kind of give it like a little faded look. Okay, and let's see, for the beautiful sentiment here, just as happy birthday, I used my stamps, and I layered uh, different um, spellbinders together, so that's pretty, I really like this one, and I just used little pearls here to just accent the, um, the center. And let's see, here I've got some seam binding that I crinkled up and inked with the um, Distress Ink. This is in the Spun Sugar. And then once um, I inked that and I dried it with my heat tool, I went over it just very, very lightly with the Vintage Photo. Just so it could uh, pick up some of that color and give it a more vintage feel. And I layered some beautiful flowers right on top. Very, very cute. These are all I Am Roses. And I did apply gesso to the tops of them. Very cute. Love the way that comes out. Here we've got some beautiful crochet trim and also some flat um, flat back pearl trim over the crochet trim. I really like the way that that looks. Very pretty. I love this trim. It's very vintage, so very cute. Here we've got a little butterfly that I used. Um, I used vellum. I stamped on vellum with my Versamark ink and then I applied the uh, white embossing powder over that and then I just dried with my heat tool and I really like that. It almost looks like you could see right, well you can see right through the wings. It's really pretty. The vellum just gives it a really pretty um, look to the butterfly. Very cute. And I did the same thing here with this larger butterfly. It's very pretty. I love the venom. Ve venom. <laughs> vellum. <laughs> Anyways, here for my tag. Let me show you. I just took one of the tags that I had and I adhered paper to it. And um, again, this is the Prima Tea Time collection. I stamped a few leaves here, if you could see, all in the corners. These are from uh, a Unity stamp. Very cute. And I used the vintage photo. I inked all the edges, applied a light bit of gesso all along the edges of the tag. And then here we have Enjoy the Day. So it's a stamp for my stash. Here we've got a little, this is Brad. This is a Recollections Brad, one of the new ones. I added that on there, as well as some little crochet trim here, and two pretty little flowers. And I also gessoed the top of the flowers. Very cute. On the back, I just kept it white, but I did use that Unity stamp all along the edges. This is where I'm going to write my sentiment to her. 
and then I inked uh, the tag to give it, give it a more vintage look. So that's my little tag, and so it's just going to go, you know, tucked in back here, like a little pocket. I'm just going to have the enjoy part sticking out. So this is my card for Leone to just wish her a happy birthday. I really like the way it came out. It's very, very vintage, very shabby, and I really hope she likes it. And let's see, let me show you what I made next. I decided to make a little canvas for her, and I just thought this was so, I mean, I just, the inspiration for this canvas is this beautiful quote by uh, Henry David Thoreau, and it says, the world is but a canvas to the imagination, and isn't he right about that, right? So just, I went ahead with the quote, the quote is just printed from my computer onto cardstock, and I just knew I had to use this gorgeous little frame by Kaiser Craft. But uh, I'm moving ahead. Let me um, walk you through the steps of what I did. This is just a regular canvas, little 6x6 six six canvas. It's the thicker kind. See how it's really thick? And what I did with, it, with this canvas, I first prepped it with a light coat of gesso, let that dry, and then um, I gave it a second coat. A uh, second coat. God, I can't talk today. <laughs> a second coat of gesso. Okay, once that dried, I used my chicken wire stencil here in, well, in little areas I'll show you. And I used modeling paste to give it this textured look. So I did that here, here in the corner, and on bits and pieces from the edges. So there's some here, there's some on top, some at the bottom, some right there. There's just some all over the place. I really like that chicken wire stencil. It is so cute. And uh, let's see, so when I used the modeling paste and the stencil, once I let that dry, I went ahead and inked it in spots with the uh, Lindy Stampkin Cape Cod Coral. I just spritzed a little bit in, you know, certain areas. And I also used the South Shore Sand. Um, so I definitely, I used the book two together because I wanted to tone down the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Cape Cod Coral. And I really like the effect. It's very nice. And so I did that to, you know, all the little areas where I used the modeling paste along with the chicken wire stencil. And I really like the way that came out. And then what I did um, here for the canvas, I did use, again, the Prima Tea Time papers, which I'm absolutely in love with right now. But what I did, I used a bunch of scraps. I had made a couple of other projects before, and I had a lot of pieces, some that might be... Um, you know, they're fairly big, but not big enough to use like on another project. So I thought this would be perfect to use on this canvas. And what I did is I just took all those little pieces, all those little scraps of paper, and I adhered them with Mod Podge all over the canvas, on the sides, on the front. Let me show you. See? And you can kind of see the different uh, pieces of paper see, that I adhered. And uh, once I adhered all the papers all over the canvas, I then lightly gessoed over them. Okay. Very nice. I really like the way that comes out. And I let the gesso dry, and then I went, uh, grabbed my sanding tool, and I lightly sanded all the papers. Because, you know, when you layer different uh, pieces of paper, you do get some that are raised. And I did want that look because it adds more texture to it, but I didn't want it to be um, let's see, to stand out so much, you know what I mean? So on places where it really stands out, I definitely sanded that down. And also what it does, it removes some of the gesso and reveals the paper underneath. And I really like that. It gives it a very worn look. And I just love the way it feels. So I did that in areas, sanded it down as you can see. And let's see, and then after I sanded it down, I applied another light coat of gesso and again sanded down the papers. So it's just, it gives it a really just beautiful, worn, shabby effect. I really, really like it. And um, let's see, so after that, we had adhered all the papers on there. I went and used my stamp, the same Unity stamp I used on the card, and I just um, stamped along the corners on some of the edges. Okay. Let's see. And of course, it's you know not going to show through as you know as well as it could because it's not a completely flat surface. But I like that. It just gives it a it, it adds character to the canvas, so I really like that. All right, now let's move on. Um, I used lots of little pretty trims. I decided to make like a little banner up here, and this is some beautiful crochet trim, the same kind I used on my card, and I just added this beautiful pearl strand to the top of that, really pretty, 
and I used lots of flowers as you can see. Here we've got three, a little cluster of three beautiful I am roses and the green, the white, and the cream color. It looks yellow, but it's like a cream color. And I did use gesso on the tops of all the beautiful flowers. Same thing up here, but here I only have two little flowers. And let's see, since I'm up here, let me show you what I did to the top. And again, you know, this is, I did some stamping here in the corner. And I added a beautiful little bird's nest. This is a Prima bird's nest. It's already nice and glittery, but I added gesso to the top of the bird nest. This is a beautiful vellum butterfly that I used my stamps and some embossing powder. I really like that. I mean, look at the beautiful wings. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the way that comes out. Here we have two beautiful I Am Roses flowers and just a little button for my collection. And I did use gesso on everything to tone them down. Very nice. And see here I looped the, um, not looped, but uh, draped the little pearls as well. Very cute. And let's see. So anyways, here is my quote. The world is but a canvas to the imagination. And what I did is I continued with the quote in my words and what I think is, is to be true. And basically it's the world is but a canvas to the imagination. The key is to open your eyes and see the beauty in nature. And that's why, you know, it was inspired by nature. Because I do get a lot of my inspiration from nature, as I think we all do, right? I mean, look at all our embellishments. Flowers, birds, butterflies. I mean, they all come from nature. So I just really think that to be true. And um, let me see what else I did here. So this wood uh, frame, again, is from Kaiser Craft. And I like the color of it, so I left it plain. But I did ink the edges very lightly with some vintage photo. And then I went ahead and used a little bit of gesso in some spots. I hope the camera is picking that up. But I just, I left it natural. I just love that color. It really stands out against the back, the background. Okay, and let's see. Here we have another pretty little vellum butterfly. God, I can't even talk. <laughs> Anyways, and let's see. I used these, uh, my Spellbinders Cherry Blossom. Uh, it comes with these little dies to make the branches. So I used the branches, I used uh, some very thin chipboard, I inked it with Vintage Photo, and then I used embossing powder, Distress Embossing Powders over that. I love doing my branches like that because it gives it some really nice texture. See this one you can see better. And, you know, I just added these cute little cherry blossoms from Iron Rose to the tops of them. I gessoed the tops as well lightly, and then used the Vintage Photo very lightly on the petals. Same thing with these guys here. Okay. And then here we have some more beautiful flowers, some more I Am Roses, and these I inked, this is, um, I used the Cape Cod Coral and Pink, uh, Pink Ladies Pink, I think it's called. I used those colors together to make, to give it this color. And once it dried, I gessoed the flower and then lightly went over it with Vintage Photo. And then these two here, these green ones, I just used some paint some acrylic paint. I cannot remember the color right now off the top of my head, guys. But just paint, some gesso once it dried, and again, some vintage photo on the edges of the petals. And here we have this pretty little uh, bird that came in a, um, a recollections pack, I believe. I think it's a new one. Um, actually, no, I take that back. It's not a recollection pack. It's, um, you know, from the $2 bin. They've got these cute little metal embellishments, and this is one of them. It came with like bird cages and a couple of other little birds, so that's where I used it from. That's where it came from, I'm sorry. And then here we've got this little bobble, like a little crystal bobble, and then there's another one back here, tucked away. Very cute. And here I just have some pretty lace for my stash that I added on there. And then here, this is the Webster's page, it's like a, I don't know what they're calling it, but it's just like a button, it's a flat back button, very cute. Really like that. And uh, here's some more of that beautiful texture with the uh, modeling paste and the chicken wire stencil. I love that. It looks so nice. And let's see. So there's my canvas. And again, um, this is the Tea Time papers um, with the uh, gesso over them. Very pretty. Here's just a key. This is, um, I believe it's a Kane Company key. And it was like a bronze color, and I just used my gesso to go over it a little bit. And before it dried, I used my finger to rub some of it off. See? And then I lightly went over it with some vintage photo. I really like that. It looks like an old key. Very nice. And here, you know, that stamping that I did. And then I just used some leftover seam binding for the top. This is um, C 
seam binding that I dyed with the sponge sugar and a little bit of vintage photo. Love that. Came out so cute. I really, really, really hope Leonie likes this. I made it with her in mind because she just loves flowers. Everything that she makes has so many flowers. It's so pretty. And um, just, I mean, oh, had her in mind and I thought I'd make her something special for her birthday. So I really hope she likes it. And uh, let me see. I think I covered everything. I hope I did. Oh, you know what? I, to the back of it, I kept looking at it. I was going to leave it alone. But the staples, you know, on the back of this were just, ugh, so ugly. So I just used this trim to cover the back. And, uh, you know, I don't know if she wants to display this, like, on a desk because it can just stand. Or, I mean, she can definitely hang it on the wall. But I'm really, really happy with the way that this came out. And I really hope you guys like it as well. And most importantly, I hope Leonie likes it. So, um, those are my two projects for today. I hope I did, I covered everything. I really hope I did. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Leave me a comment and, you know, I'll make sure that I answer. And here's my card again. Very pretty. I'm happy with both of these. And, uh, definitely got to get these out to her. And, uh, I guess that's it, guys. So, I will see everybody later. I hope everyone's having a wonderful week. And, uh, catch you guys later, alright? Bye-bye.